Mr. President, always great to have you. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. I notice in the heat you just don't sweat, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> let me ask you, uh, I know you've been in contact, sir, with Governor Huntsman out of Utah yes. and the miners, um, and you've offered whatever federal support and help he needs to rescue them. But it comes at a time when environmentalists say you should go a step further and maybe abandon coal, that it's too risky, too mm -hmm. dangerous, too dirty. Yep. What do you say? I say that, uh, first of all, it doesn't make any sense to abandon a energy resource of which we've got a bountiful supply if part of our strategy is to become less dependent on foreign sources of energy. Uh, secondly, I'm a believer in technology. And I believe we'll be able to continue to develop technologies that will enable us to use coal in even more environmentally friendly ways. So at a time when we're looking at the bridge collapse in Minneapolis and infrastructure costs and this push that maybe we need to reprioritize our federal spending, mm -hmm. what do you say? Uh, look, I'm all for prioritization. But if what one is suggesting is is that uh, we don't need to be fully engaged in an enemy that wants to attack us again and therefore cut back spending and supporting our troops, I strongly disagree. Uh, the biggest threat to our economy, short-term threat, the biggest threat to the lives of our citizens is another terrorist attack. And uh, after September the 11th, uh, Neil, I vowed I would use all resources uh, necessary to protect this country. Uh, I believe we've got ample revenues to... Uh, do a lot of important projects. I mean, if bridges, if rebuilding bridges uh, is that big a priority, then we ought to prioritize that in the highway monies that we've already budgeted, uh, as opposed to, you know, helping individual congressmen or senators realize pet projects in their districts. In other words, prioritization means real prioritization. Um, Does it bother you, Mr. President, when every time we have a crisis, unfortunately like this, they say, if it wasn't for Iraq, we'd have money for this. <laughs> if it wasn't for Iraq, we'd have money for this. No, it doesn't bother me. Uh, because I firmly believe that uh, what we're doing is the right thing. And I know it's an unpopular war with some, but I will tell you it would be even more unpopular as if uh, we abandoned the mission there and Al-Qaeda and other extremists became more emboldened uh, and uh, attacked us again. And then people would look back and say, what happened to them in 2007? How come they couldn't see the impending threat? Well, I see the threat. And uh, I will look forward to working with Congress, members of both parties, to continue to focus on the threat. Um, and uh, I've been told you can't fight a war and balance the budget. Well, we're fighting a war, we cut taxes, and our deficit is shrinking. As a matter of fact, it's, uh, uh, as a percentage of GDP, it's uh, below the 40-year average. Uh, you know, we're told we can't do a lot of things, and I, uh, I believe we can do. I believe we can do a lot of things, starting with protecting our country, and at the main, meantime, diversify our energy supply or fix infrastructure. But it does require prioritization, something that Washington's not very good at doing. Um, speaking of prioritization, sir, a lot of the Democratic presidential candidates <laughs> have said since the, the mortgage troubles that uh, we'd have to rescue or bail out. They're very particular not using the word bailout, but what they do say is a reserve set aside for sick lenders. Mm. Um, Hillary Clinton, I think, is proposing something in the vicinity of a billion dollars mm. uh, to do that. Are you for such measures that would shore up the mortgage industry? I'm for letting the market work. Uh, my biggest concern when it comes to mortgage industry is the, is the uh, lendee, not the lender. It's the person to whom uh, people have uh, lent money. In other words, I'm worried about people having their homes foreclosed. I'm worried about people buying into a deal that they're not certain as to what they're buying into. And I think the focus ought to be on the individual homeowner. And, uh, and to that end, I do believe there needs to be more transparency, and we're asking for more money for you know, truth in lending. I think we ought to crack down on predatory lending. I don't think we need new law. We ought to enforce the law on their books. And, uh, and then I think we ought to let the market work. People are reassessing risk. And... Uh, and there's, uh, the good news is we've got ample liquidity in our society to be able to, you know, deal with this uh, current issue. And, uh, but I think what Senator Clinton is saying, Mr. President, Well, let me is, put it more bluntly. No, I'm not for a federal bailout. Okay. Because that is what she is essentially looking at. Right. And uh, what she's saying is that because there were some duplicitous lenders out there, that you can't just let that go. And people who were hoodwinked into these mortgages now have to be rescued. Oh, I thought you said the lenders as opposed to the lendees. Uh, first of all, I believe that, uh, you know, there's enough liquidity to encourage refinancing. Uh, no question we ought to be cracking down on predatory lendors, and, uh, and we will.
So to be clear, sir, if someone was a victim of a predatory lender who gave them sort of a song and dance on a mortgage and they took that song and dance and they took that mortgage and now they risk losing their home, would you say it is not the government's job to rescue that well, person? Actually, there is, a, there is a place for people to refinance, and that's at the FHA. And therefore, it's important to reform the FHA to make sure it's got a more extended reach. There are refinancing mechanisms at the federal level available for homeowners. Do you think the mortgage crisis, as it's being called, is overblown? I think any time anybody's homes are threatened uh, is, is, uh, is something we ought to be concerned about. Um, I, I do believe that uh, we're adjusting from a plethora of capital that came rushing our liquidity that came rushing into our system and uh, we're watching it very carefully and uh, you know paying attention to um, you know the whether or not there's enough ample revenues in our society ample cash in our society to help uh, help uh, for there to be a natural adjustment through the marketplace let me ask you there is a report out now that says a lot of the recent attacks on u.s soldiers have clearly almost indisputably come from uh iranian back sources that they might in fact be iranian weapons themselves yet we continue to talk to the iranians mm. um we made it clear to the iranians that there will be a consequence when we catch your people moving weapons into iraq that's what we told them and what is the consequence well they'll be brought to justice would the consequence involve ever going into Iran? Uh, this is a uh, a battle for Iraq, and uh, uh, we are made it very clear to the Iranian government that, uh, and that's the reason you meet with them, uh, is that uh, you're moving uh, materials that are affecting the stability of Iraq, and more importantly, uh, for American families causing death, and there will be a consequence for doing it. Separately, sir, there's a report that was in the UK Telegraph that the Chinese very concerned about possible sanctions that might be slapped on them would consider the so-called nuclear option. That is selling a lot of dollar-denominated mm -hmm. assets. Uh, I guess they hold close to a trillion dollars. Are you worried Trying about to do what? Trying to crater our economy? Right. Uh, that would be foolhardy hardy of them to do that. Um, uh, that's why, uh, uh, first of all, I don't know who put out that report. I doubt it came from the president's office. Uh, well, I guess the, I mean, what is, happens is it comes through university sources, which is usually the way word gets out of potential government oh, really? thinking. Well, uh, one of the reasons why we've got this uh, Paulson-led economic dialogue with China is to particularly work, is to talk about those kinds of... Uh, of uh, you know threats, if that's in case the, the position of the government, uh, it would be foolhardy for them to do this. It would be, uh, uh, in other words, they'd hurt themselves absolutely. more than us. I think so. You're right. Uh, and there are good ways to work through our difficulties. Listen, we have a very complex trading relationship with China. I happen to believe it's very important for our economy that we have uh, access to Chinese markets, and um, I think it's been beneficial, by the way, for consumers that there be, uh, you know, Chinese goods coming in, which have helped hold down the cost of inflation, particularly in the face of rising energy prices. Um, I, I would hope we could work out our differences in a cordial way as opposed to, you know, whatever the option you called it is, or, or frankly, legislation out of Congress that will affect our capacity to have a, you know, a relationship. Now, having said that, when there's difficulties, we bring them up. I mean, we are, and, and we have used uh, our powers, with the, particularly through the Department of Commerce, to make it clear we expect to be treated fairly. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I... It is in the interest of the United States, Neil, in my judgment, that we encourage the Chinese to go from a savings economy to a consumer economy and then have access to those markets so that U.S. producers and service providers can expand their businesses and therefore create more jobs here at home.